Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Ah, oh, that's better. Protectyourbubble.com. Proud sponsors of Swipe on Sky News. You're watching Swipe on the show this week. Past the remote, roadside. We find out how cars are getting smarter. I take a test drive in a vehicle that claims to see round corners. And we're leaving the AAAs to one side as we look at a few standout independent games in our review this week. Remember the days when roads used to be so quiet, so empty? No, neither do I. And it seems that just as quickly as roads are getting busier, cars are getting more advanced. I mean, not so long ago, if you had a sat-nav, you might have been considered a bit of a show-off. But that's not a patch on some of the bits you can see in cars these days. Here's Will. It's easy to get distracted by the complex dashboards in modern cars. But what if you could control everything without having to press any buttons or attempt to master a glitchy voice control program? Well, BMW think they've solved the problem. Their gesture control system lets you do things like adjust your music, make calls, or even control cameras attached to the car simply by waving your finger in the air. Gesture control for us is one of a world first essentially for uh, an automated vehicle and it uses infrared technology to recognise different hand movements to operate features within the car. So if, for instance if you wanted the volume on the stereo to go up, just move your hand in a clockwise direction, volume down anti-clockwise. You can also control different camera function movements, accepting and rejecting telephone calls in the vehicle. And if you're proud of your parking skills, well now you've got some competition. By pressing a button on a key fob, you can manoeuvre the car into a space. But BMW aren't the only ones working on remote control vehicles. Mercedes have also added a remote parking feature to their new E-Class. And Jaguar Land Rover have created a prototype Range Rover that you can control using a smartphone app. At the moment, it's illegal in the UK to remotely operate a vehicle on public roads. But manufacturers are hoping this will change. So could technology like this improve the driving experience. Would you really want to spend a thousand pounds, two thousand pounds on an expensive key fob so that just occasionally when you have a very tight parking spot you're able to get out of the car? Um, I mean obviously it would be worth doing for the sort of practical jokes of scaring people with a remote controlled 7 Series um, but I don't think it will really take off. Safety is one of the most important issues for car makers. This system from Ford uses radar and cameras to scan the road and warns the driver if a vehicle or pedestrian is in the way. And if the driver doesn't stop, the car brakes automatically. Well, after seeing all of that tech, we thought we'd organise our own road safety test. Here's Gemma. So I've never been in a car that can see round corners before. How is this going to work and what exactly is it? We've got a split view camera. Mm -hmm. It's mounted on the front of the vehicle. Right. And it, uh, it assists drivers in parking and manoeuvring. Yeah, what kind of manoeuvres? Um, well, let, it's probably better to demonstrate it in action. It's probably uh, a blind junction. This is pretty blind up here. I'm going to head towards this direction. So how does the camera benefit me in a scenario like this? OK, traditionally you would uh, edge so far forward that you'd be going onto the footpath mm. or you'd enter the line of traffic. Yeah. What this system does, if you press the button twice, um, before you stick the bonnet of the car out, you're able to see any oh. obstacles coming from the left so and the right. So what's that? Is that a fisheye lens on the camera? Yeah, it's fisheye lens. Uh, the image processing stitches the image together. So what feels really alien is that I'm looking inside the car when I should be looking left and right, really. Yes. Oh, and there's a cyclist there, because typically you can't always hear a cyclist coming. And I wouldn't have been able to see him from back here so if I edge forward a bit more you can see I, I mean yeah you can see both pavements and I'm still behind the pillar yeah how much is this kit this uh, retails around about 400 pounds but is that just a bit of an expensive option for a driver who could just keep on edging out slowly do you really need it um, today people want more and more uh, safety systems and driver assist features we we've gone from parking aid and rear view cameras now to people are wanting more advanced features like this split view camera it adds a, uh, a further sense to the vehicle enables you to do things that you wouldn't normally be able to do safely still to come on swipe we're staying in the capital but the victorian gothic version 
with giant crabs. That can only be a reference to our games review. But first, here's a roundup of what else has been going on in the tech world this week. Apple and Samsung are leading the charge in nominations for this year's T3 Awards, nicknamed the Oscars of Tech. The giants are each up for nine gongs, including Brand of the Year and Gadget of the Year. The awards take place in September. Be careful who you decide to unfriend on Facebook. A new app is letting users track who is ditching them and when. The free application, conveniently named Who Deleted Me on Facebook, breaks down your friends into categories including New, You Deleted, Deleted You, Deactivated and Current. Hashtag Orcs. Forget selfie sticks, here's a way to take hands-free shots. A phone case with an extraordinary grip launched on crowdfunding site Indiegogo this week. Extraverso, the Italian startup behind the case, says the material has a suction effect on flat or glass surfaces, but it isn't sticky. Breathe easy, single celebrities out there. The popular dating app Tinder has introduced blue ticks for famous and high-profile users. For anyone who doesn't know, the ticks, previously seen on Twitter, mean you're verified. Basically, you're the real you. So there's no need to let fame and all that money hold you back from finding true love. Right, I think it's time we took a break from all that congestion. How about a few games? And away from the blockbuster releases this week, we got Luke Kamali to take us through a few of his favourite breakthrough indie games. He says you mustn't miss. Her story is a bit of a different one. It's set during the summer of 1994, and what you're presented with is a series of police interviews that are filmed with a real life actress, and she is giving you bits and pieces of a story. Her husband's gone missing and she's reported him missing. But over the course of these interviews, she's somehow become a suspect. If you ever see, heard the radio drama Serial, it's basically a game version of that. Your task is to figure out, look through her alibis, look through all the different bits of evidence she gives. Is she guilty? Is she not guilty? Read her body language. It, she gives an incredible performance, but there's so much depth to it. For a start, you're logged into this computer system that you're going through this police database as a guest, why are you a guest? You also get to see a partial reflection of your character in the screen that becomes clear at certain moments but less clear at others and all of this weaves together to create a really, really deep story and as the game evolves, it, the payoff at the end is really, really magnificent. In Sunless Sea, you're cast as a steamboat captain in this underwater version of Victorian London and your task is pretty simple. You need to go out explore all these islands that are in the underwater sea, but make it back to port safely. So it's all about juggling your resources, your supplies, your fuel, but also your crew. Every island you get to will have its own story, kind of like a choose your own adventure book. So you may come to an island that has loads of walking, talking rats. Do you make war with them? Do you try and give them an offering? And that will then develop the story and what happens to you next. It's a pretty difficult game, so as you explore the ocean and you find more and more things, you're going to want to explore more, but you always need to make it back to port to refuel, because if you don't, what are you going to do? Are you going to cannibalise half your crew in order to keep the rest of them alive, but then it's going to be more difficult because you don't have the manpower to get back? It's a great game where the stories are constantly evolving and updating, and it's incredibly, incredibly immersive. Sunset is an interesting game. It's set during the 1970s in a fictional South American country. And you play an African-American graduate called Angela. She's a cleaner for this very, very rich, rich man. Um, and their chores in the apartment itself are quite dull, they're quite boring. But what you can hear outside is a revolution going on. You can hear sirens, you hear gunshots. And for an hour before sunset every day, you're there cleaning. And as the story develops and as you clean more, new items appear in the apartment, you know, and it becomes evident that the man who owns this apartment is somehow involved in this resistance. And there's also implications of a relationship between Angela and the man himself. The fantastic thing is Angela's internal monologues are so well written and her character is so engaging that she's definitely someone you are happy to be experiencing this story with. But again, it's another story that is just completely moving and emotional. That's it. Take a look at Sky News for iPad and mobile for some bonus features from this week's episode. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.
Gotcha. Ah, oh, that's better. Protectyourbubble.com. Proud sponsors of Swipe on Sky News.